Welcome to Electron Online. Here we're going to discuss what we mean by the divergence. Again, we'll use del operator, but in this case, the del operator will operate on a vector quantity and the result will be a scalar. But what does that really mean? Well, think about it. If we operate on a vector quantity, we get a scalar, we get a singular magnitude, a singular number. Now that scalar could be a function of x, y, and z. It could change as we change x, y, and z, but it can either be a constant number or it could depend upon where in the vector field we are. But here, mathematically, when we take the divergence of a vector field, f being a vector field, we write it as the upside down triangle times the vector field. But notice that this is like a dot product. And just like with a dot product, when you multiply two vectors together via dot product, you get a scalar quantity. And here it is. It's the partial of m with respect to x, the partial of n with respect to y, and the partial of p with respect to z. You may say, well, wait a minute. What is m, n, and p? Well, the vector function will be defined as some function of x, y, and z in the i direction. We call that m some function of x, y, and z in the j direction, we call that n, and some function x, y, and z, uh, depend on x, y, and z in, in the k direction, we call that p. So those are the three components of the vector field, which in itself may be functions of x, y, and z. We then take the partial respect to x of m, the partial respect of, y, of n with respect to y, and the partial with respect to z of p, and we'll get a scalar quantity. Now, what is that scalar quantity? What does it represent? The best way to think about it, because this is a little difficult, but I think this is the best way to think about it. If you think of the arrows that represent a vector field, we've seen lots of examples of that, and I'll show you some more examples in the next several videos. But if you think of the arrows representing the vector field, of course, the arrows represent direction and magnitude of a vector field that changes all the way through the xy plane or the xyz volume. If we allow those arrows to rep of the vector field to be representative as the velocity and direction of a moving fluid. So think of a fluid moving in certain direction at a certain velocity. The velocity could change depending upon where you are in the fluid. Let's say here we have a fluid that flows faster here and slower as we go down. This could be on the xy plane, for example. Here we can see a fluid that uniformly increases speed as we go in this direction. Here we see a fluid that seems to converge onto a single point down here, but you can see that the velocity of the fluid decreases as you go in that direction. Now, the best way to think about a divergence of a vector field is by drawing a box around a small portion of that vector field. And then we'll look at the arrows, and then we see the arrows going into the box and the arrows coming out of the box. And if the magnitude and direction, in a way, if the magnitude of the arrows going into the box equals the magnitude of the arrows coming out of the box, in this way you can see that the same amount of fluid goes into the box as come out of the box, then you can say that the divergence of the vector field is equal to zero. If the same amount of fluid goes in as out, if the magnitude and direction of the arrows going into the box is the same as the, if the magnitude and direction of the arrows coming out of the box, then you can say the divergence is zero. Now, typically what we do with the box is we shrink it, we shrink it, we shrink it, we shrink it down to an infinitesimally small little box, and then that should still hold true. If the amount of arrows going in equals the amount of arrows coming out, the divergence is zero. But here we have a case where we can see that the vector field increases as we go in the positive x direction. The arrows going into the box have a much smaller length here than arrows coming out of the box. So it appears as magically the amount of fluid going into the box is less than the amount of fluid coming out of the box. It's almost like the box magically generates more fluid so more comes out than in. Hmm, I would love to have that in my bank account. Oh no, that's a bad thing. I don't want that to happen in the bank account. I don't want more coming out that's going in. But what this means though, from a vector field perspective, as we shrink the box, this will still hold true. And in that case, if more comes out than in, then the divergence has a positive amount. So the, the result that we get when we do a divergence on a vector field, and it's bigger than zero, that means more comes out than goes into a box anywhere inside that vector field. Or, 
if we have more going in, if the vector field is stronger on the direction into the box as coming out of the box, then the divergence of that vector field will be less than zero. So, in the end, what does the divergence mean? Well, you take the divergence of the vector field. If it's zero, that means that it tends to be uniform and that at any point, there's no more, the field doesn't increase going out of the box, it's coming into the box. If the divergence is greater than zero, then the field becomes stronger in the direction of the arrows as than where you came from. And if the divergence is less than zero, then the then the magnitude or the strength of the vector field becomes smaller as you move in the direction of the vector field. That's basically it. Does the strength remain the same as you move along the direction of the vector field? Does the strength increase of the vector field? Does the strength decrease in the direction of the vector field? In that case, you can see that the divergence gives you the information what is happening to the vector field in any given, on any given point in that vector field. And of course, it could be a constant number or it can be actually be a variable number. So for different locations in the vector field, the amount of increase or the amount of decrease can actually vary for values that are different in X and Y. But the zero concept is the same even if it's a constant value or if it's a variable value. In all cases, it's a scalar quantity and it tells you if the vector field increases or decreases in strength in the direction as you move in the direction of the vector field itself. And hopefully that will give you a clue and understanding of what a divergence is. In the next couple of videos, we'll show you some examples. We'll show you some vector fields. We'll do the divergence and you'll see how it actually applies. And that's what we mean by the divergence of a vector quantity or, or a vector field.